Okay, furniture friends, here we are again. This little sideboard I picked up from Facebook Marketplace a couple of weeks ago and it's been sitting in my garage because I just couldn't figure out exactly what I wanted to do with it. This is a very strange piece of furniture in a way because the top is actually not wood and this sort of rattan looking element in the front, it's plastic. This piece used to have a top, but I'm actually going to be refinishing it without its original top. And by top, I mean a hutch top that sits on top. This little panel here is also not real wood, but you can see that the door frame is solid wood, as well as everything you see in here. This is solid elm, both on the doors, the base, the shelf, the sides, and there's a pretty nasty stain in here too. I don't really know exactly what it is yet. I will figure that out soon enough. I did discover a bonus drawer, so that's always fun. This drab and dreary vintage piece is going high contrast with rich coal black and natural wood. You're not going to recognize this when I'm done. Stick around. My name is Angie and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. So I just need a moment to ponder here. This piece has been in my garage for a couple of weeks now because I couldn't figure out what the heck I wanted to do with it. One thing I do know is that it really needs a good scrubbing. It doesn't look too bad aside from being dusty, but wait till you see how dirty this piece is. I'm going to be painting pretty much everything you see here aside from the base. So I need to make sure that this is super clean. I am going to be scuff sanding it, but I want to make sure there's no waxes or oils and obviously dirt on the top. That could affect the adhesion of my paint. The base, on the other hand, is solid elm and so are the legs, which you don't see here, but there are tapered legs that go with this. The base I'm thinking I want to do very natural. I might not even stain the wood. I'll probably just sand it down and do some sort of a clear coat on it. Elm is pretty light and it's not the easiest wood to stain anyway. So I think I'm just going to leave it as natural as I possibly can. But yeah, starting off here, I cleaned the whole piece inside and out. It was pretty dusty and dirty. Even though I'm going to be painting this piece, it is going to take forever for me to get to the point where I'm ready to paint. <laughs> this is one of those projects I thought was going to be easy, but I kept discovering more and more things that I had to fix, and so there's a lot of repairs in this video. Oh, and don't be alarmed here, there's another dolly in behind here, so it's not going to fall off. Okay, so this is the first big issue that I noticed. Um, this bottom is several pieces of solid elm glued together and it has bowed or warped, I don't know the exact technical term, but it is bent <laughs> over time on both sides, which is a real bummer. And you know what? One of the most common questions I get asked on my listings when I'm selling a piece is, is it solid wood? Let me tell you about solid wood. <laughs> solid wood is a pain in the ass. Obviously, it's going to depend where you live, but here in Nova Scotia, we have wild swings uh, where it's humid and then super dry. It's a very seasonal place to live, and solid wood furniture doesn't do super well here. It's not uncommon to have pieces like this where the doors stick for half the year and are too loose for the other half. So there were no screws holding this bottom part onto the main cabinet of the piece. You can see there's these little grooves and slots and the main cabinet just fits inside of those and was glued in so all I did was take my rubber mallet and just try to separate them. You can see just how bent this bottom is. So you'll see me here taking these off because I at this point had thought that I was going to remove all of the hardware from the doors and use those cool magnetic push latches but I ended up finding different hardware for the doors so I am going to be putting those back. I need to clear out these grooves where the main cabinet sits and I actually tore a little piece when I was pulling them apart so I'm just going to fix that before I move on. But when I go to reattach this, I have to make sure that all of the original dried glue is out of there. So I'll be using a heat gun to try to soften it enough to scrape it all off.
I also have to address this crack here. It's a hard thing to get at and it doesn't go down all the way. So I just used a putty knife to try to separate it a little bit and basically with this paintbrush, I'm trying to force the glue down into the joint. It takes a little while to get all the glue down there to the bottom, but gravity does do its job and the bristles also help pull it down. There's also another trick that I like to use, and that's using dental floss. Just plain old dental floss. <laughs> using the floss is really helpful in situations like this where the opening is quite small. So you basically just work it around, you can pull glue down into the joint, and really what you're trying to do is coat both sides of the opening here so that when you clamp it together, you have a good bond. A glue syringe can work. It's a little tight even for a glue syringe here, so that's why I'm choosing to use the floss. Once I feel I have enough glue in the crack here, I'm just going to use some water to remove the excess before I clamp it up. I chose to do the repair and the glue up before refinishing this piece of wood because sometimes wood glue can stain raw wood, so I'm going to get this all tight and then I'll refinish it. You'll see there's another small crack there. I checked it's not moving at all and it doesn't go down the board very far, so I'm just leaving that one as is. I'm sandwiching my piece of wood here between these two boards so that when I clamp this, it will somewhat straighten the board at least where the crack is. It's not going to bend the rest of the wood, obviously. But I do want to make sure that at least the part that I'm gluing is going to be as straight as possible. When you have big boards like this that are completely warped, there's usually not a whole lot you can do about it. It just sort of is what it is, unless you want to take the time to replace it or try to plane it down and flatten it. It's a lot of work. In this case, it's not really worth my time to try to do that, so I'm just trying to make the best of what I have here. So as I mentioned before, I'm using my heat gun here on the lowest setting to try to soften some of the glue that is in these little openings where the cabinet fits inside and that's how the piece comes together. I have to get all of this dried glue out so that when I put the new glue in, it has a good bond and the piece is going to be nice and solid and tight. Wood glue only sticks to wood fibers, so if I were to just put new glue on top of this old glue and then put the piece of wood in, it's just not going to be as strong as I need this to be. Because this big slab here is solid wood, I decided I would just go ahead and try to sand it. I started off with an 80 grit, which is fairly coarse. I don't use 80 very often. And as you can see, it's working, but I was having a heck of a time. <laughs> and I got about maybe two minutes in and said, screw this, I'm going to go get the stripper and you'll see how much faster this is. I absolutely could have spent an hour sanding this top and gone through probably four or five sanding discs trying to get this old cruddy finish off or I can take maybe seven or eight minutes, save the sanding pads and just scrape this finish away. Now normally this stripper you want to let it sit for about 15 minutes. This is only 5 minutes elapsed time here. Already you can see how well it's working. And like I said, I could have kept going with the sanding but it was taking way too long. This is 100 times faster. I've had a few newer subscribers recently ask what I do with this gunk. <laughs> once it's scraped off. So I have a little plastic tub with a lid. So when it's wet, I just put it in the little plastic tub and then put the cover on it and it eventually actually dries out. 
Once it's dry, I was told by my hazardous waste folks that you, it can just go in regular construction garbage. But if it's liquid and wet, it's, that's when the chemical apparently is the most volatile and that has to go to hazardous waste. So this is going a lot faster now that the main part has been stripped off. I moved up to 150 grit here, so quite a difference from the 80 grit before that was barely scratching the surface. You can see kind of in the middle of the board there where that stain was. I have no idea what this stain was. Whatever it was had actually penetrated through the surface and into the wood itself. So I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get rid of it. I think once I stain it, it'll be okay. This is kind of funny actually this part because I'm filling these holes thinking I'm still going to be using these magnetic push latches but I changed my mind on those, so I will eventually be drilling back into these holes to put the original magnetic catches on. Sometimes I go into a piece with a plan and it changes along the way. It actually happens more often than not. So you just sort of roll with it, evolve as it goes along. I'm just sanding that dark brown finish off the legs. The legs are also solid elm. Once I have most of the finish off, I'll go back in with a 180 grit and this will lighten it up a little bit more. The thing about elm is that it has a fairly strong and pronounced wood grain, kind of like oak. So it's actually hard to get it completely clear, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm not necessarily looking for a whitewashed look for this piece. I just want natural wood and that's what I'm going to get here. One thing I'd like to do with these tapered legs, and you can kind of see the brown around the bottom there, is I just put a little bit of an angled edge on it and this helps keep the bottom of the feet from catching on things and splintering and splitting. I'll often do it along super sharp edges as well. I use the orbital on the flat areas of the base assembly, um, but I'm using just a piece of sandpaper wrapped around a thin little paintbrush to get into this groove. It's really hard to sand these spots, so I find just shaping it with like a dowel or a pencil or something like that really helps get in there to sand it away. And just did a final hand sanding here with 220 grit. So it's time now to go back in and finish sanding the base. If you recall, I initially sanded with 150 and this I believe is a 180 and then I'm going to go up to 220 and that's where I'm going to stop. So part of this piece of wood is going to be inside the cabinet and the other part will be exposed around the outside and these two areas are going to be different colors. So I want to make a line here so that I can stain the part for the inside with a darker stain and then the outside you'll see will be almost a clear coat. So I'm just using the painter's tape here to line up against the edge where it starts to curve over and I will start staining on the other side of that tape. I'm actually going to be using a water-based stain for this. Elm isn't always the easiest to stain. I find it just doesn't accept stain very well. And this particular water-based stain I find just sort of penetrates a little bit better than some of the gel stains which tend to wipe right off. I did water it down slightly and it will be a slightly different color than the rest of the inside of the cabinet. It's going to be a little bit cooler and probably a little bit lighter but I'm okay with that. The very first time I tried this exact same product, I hated it. <laughs> I was so used to the oil-based stains that this water-based stuff was just too weird and it was so opaque and I just, I didn't like it at all. But I tried it again with a little bit of water mixed in just to dilute it slightly and oh my gosh, so much better. 
it has a tendency to raise the grain, so ideally you would pop the grain beforehand with a little bit of water, light hand sanding, and then go ahead with your water-based stain. But it does have some advantages. It dries really quickly. You're ready for your top coat way faster than an oil-based stain, and it doesn't leave lap marks. So normally when you stop halfway through a board like this with an oil-based stain, and then you come back into the other side, you'll often have a mark where those two lines overlap. With this stuff, when it goes over your lap marks, it reactivates a stain that's already there, and you get a perfectly smooth finish. I love it. I probably should have taped the sides too, but I didn't think I would get very much on my wood, but I did, so I'm just sanding it back off again. And there we go. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I'm a huge fan of Odie's Oil. This is a newer product to me. Um, this is Odie's Super Duper Oil. It's a little bit runnier than the universal oil that I normally use. Um, and I also have this pigment. I've never used the pigments, this is my first time doing it, mixing it up. I know roughly what the ratio should be, but I don't know yet how it's going to react on different woods. So I want the natural part of the wood here to remain nice and light, I don't want it to go yellowy. So my hope for this is that it will help keep the wood nice and light while protecting it. The Odie's Super Duper Everlasting Oil is similar to the Odie's Universal Oil that you've seen me use many times. It can be used by itself or it can be used in conjunction with other Odie's products like the Universal Oil or the Wax or the Butter. It has a little bit less luster or sheen than the universal oil, but it's applied exactly the same way and it gives the same amount of protection. Now, I didn't really notice a huge difference in the color here using the pigments. It could be that I didn't mix it strong enough. It could be that it just doesn't show up very well on this lighter wood. Like I said, it was the first time using it, so I'll continue to experiment and tweak it. Now obviously I'm using the untinted oil now on the stain part. I've had a few people ask me if Odie's can be used over paint and over stained wood, and you've seen me use it on stained wood a few times. My honest opinion is that Odie's is always best on raw wood, but I have used it on paint with great results. I've used it on leather, I actually used it in my car. You can use it on concrete and it's great for metal. And as long as the stain has completely dried, you can use it over stain as well. But again, I just, I feel like it's just that much better when it's on raw wood by itself. And it smells delicious. I wish there was smell of vision <laughs> because it smells like oranges. It's so good. As with any of the Odie's products, once it has had some time to absorb, you're going to go and wipe off all of the excess. You can still see that stain a little bit. I'm not worried about it. It is a million times better than it was. So this is now ready to have the cabinet put back on. So what I'm doing is I'm putting glue in all of these slots. There are no screws to hold this whole bottom section to the main part of the cabinet. It's all from these grooves and glue. So I wanted to make sure the glue was good. Like I said, there's no way I can completely fix these warped boards, but my hope is that if I get them in and glue them strong and I had fixed that one section which is now straight, while I don't expect it to be perfect, I don't really expect there to be any long-term issues with this piece. I mean, it's come this far and it's still standing and still functional. So I left this to set up overnight. It's completely dry. I'm going to take all my clamps off. If you remember when I took this bottom piece off, I tore out some of the staples on the backboard. So I need to reattach this to that bottom board. I don't have a staple gun or a nail gun. Um, I'm just going to drive some small common nails in, making sure that they have a head large enough that they don't poke right through the backboard. 
Now, there's nothing really wrong with this bottom, and no one's gonna see it anyway, but I'm gonna give it a quick little sand anyway. I mostly want to get rid of the remaining brown stain around the edges. So on the other side of this board, as you remember, it's very light and I don't know, I just feel like it needs to match. <laughs> to those of you still with me here at the 20 minute mark, you're amazing. <laughs> I told you this was going to take a long time to get to the point where anything really fun happens. I'm just screwing this back onto the bottom and we're going to get the legs on and flip this baby upright, finally. These are the pieces that people look at the end result and they think, oh that must have been so fast and so easy. But they don't know that it took a day and a half just to get to the point where you were able to paint it. <laughs> so this is kind of cool. I actually received this set of furniture felt pads from my Amazon wishlist from Dawn. So thank you so much for these Dawn. I go through a ton of them. They're super handy to have on hand. Okay, let's get this piece up on its legs. Having multiple dollies in different sizes is super handy when you're doing this by yourself. Okay, so here's where we're at. The base is done. I need to have a look at some hardware. You know me, I love reusing vintage hardware when I can, but this piece just needs something a little bit more modern. So I buy hardware on sale everywhere I see it. <laughs> I hoard it in a way. And I want to do something either brass or gold, something with a bit of a mid-century vibe to it. And I think these are just the thing. I'm going to have to plug the two original holes and make a new middle hole for this pole, but I think this is going to be great. Might do it vertical, I could do it horizontal, probably horizontal, <laughs> but I have options. First I need to mark where I'm going to drill my new holes, I'm basically just going right in the center of what's already there, and using a 3 16th bit, I'm going to drill my new hole. And then of course repeat the process on all of the other doors. I'm using Quickwood Wood Epoxy to plug the existing hardware holes. It's a two-part mixture. All you do is cut off what you think you need. Definitely cut off less than you think you'll need because once you mix it, you can't save it. It's, it's gone. So just cut off a little bit and you basically just mix it together till it's one uniform color and then you can go ahead and fill your holes. I think you guys have earned a quick rescue bunny intermission. <laughs> Little do you know that these bunnies are actually really big into DIY as well. In fact, here's some of their handiwork. <laughs> Okay, now back to work for me and filling holes. I'm gonna let these harden up for a while and use a little bit of spackle over top just to make sure it's nice and smooth. And finally, we can get on with the fun stuff. I'm gonna be painting this entire cabinet, obviously, except for the base. I don't need to remove the entire surface or finish. All I really need to do is give my paint a little bit of something to stick to. I could have primed this piece, but I wasn't at all worried about bleed through, and I wasn't worried about adhesion because I knew that I had properly prepped the piece. I had cleaned it really well with a degreaser, scuff sanded it properly, removed the dust prior to painting. I am all about more thin coats rather than fewer thick coats when it comes to painting. The thinner your coats are, the more they're going to adhere, and I don't usually have issues with adhesion at all. Now 
Now I totally could have used a roller on these big flat surfaces. I don't mind painting with a brush. I also could have sprayed the piece. I do have a sprayer, believe it or not. I don't use it all that often, but I have one. But because the door fronts needed to be brushed on and I had to be really careful around the base, I opted to just brush the whole piece. I started to sand out the drawer and I noticed there was this weird coating so I did a little scrape sure enough there's wax on the inside of this drawer so a little bit of mineral spirits and scrub-a-dub will help dissolve the wax and then I can go in and try to remove some of this surface staining. I couldn't get it all but I did get it to a point where I was happy with it. I'm using some Wise Owl Furniture Solve to recoat the inside of this drawer with wax, and this brush was actually a Amazon wishlist gift. It unfortunately didn't come with a note, so I don't know who sent it. Um, I don't know why some come with notes and some don't, but thank you so much to whoever sent this to me. You can see Muffin, my quality control manager, is on the job. I've had several people now leave comments asking if putting this stuff in the bottom of drawers will affect clothes, and when you apply just a small amount to wipe away the excess, let it dry. I've never had any issues with it. The front of this drawer will be hidden inside the piece, so I'm not too worried about it. All I'm doing is using a little bit of mineral spirits and some super fine steel wool just to kind of buff it off and then I'll add a little bit of the furniture salve as well and it'll be good as new. So if you remember way back in the beginning I had taken these out and filled the holes because I was going to change the catch mechanism but I ended up deciding to keep these instead so I'm reinserting them into the holes. I do have to say I'm quite impressed with the grip that the wood filler gives on the screw. It feels like I'm screwing right into wood. I'm using this beeswax hemp oil combo from Fusion and I found my old wax brush was a little stiff so I switched to a rag for application here. The stuff is pretty easy to put on. You basically just use a wax brush and wipe it on or use a rag and then buff off the excess. Yikes. Let's have a quick peek at what this piece looked like before it met me. It was dirty and dingy and dark, obviously dated. Thank you so much for hanging out with me while I did this flip. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to see more like this. Let's have a look. Thank you.